In this video, we're going to talk about the aircraft survivability equipment on the OH-58 Delta Kiowa Warrior. The footage used in this video is pre-release software and is intended for promotion and training purposes. Its visual and audio qualities may not represent the final product. Alright guys, welcome to the flight line and today we're going to take a look at the OH-58 Delta Kiowa Warrior and the ASE or Aircraft Survivability Equipment, which is a fancy way of saying the electronic warfare equipment on board the aircraft. And we essentially have some different options based on era and we're going to talk about these in detail keep in mind i do not want to go to prison and i know a lot about this equipment or at least i used to i used to be an ewo uh, but i have forgotten most of it i'm going to try to stay as far away from the stuff that's going to get me in jail as possible and just talk about some relevant data for us playing dcs now the first thing we're going to take a look at is the version that i'm used to the version that i flew with the alq 144 now the ALQ-144 is an infrared countermeasure set, which is ironic because it only has the one system located here on the tail boom. Now as we look at the aircraft, we can see that at only certain angles we can see those windows. Read into that what you will, but essentially the way this works is it confuses infrared missiles as best as it can. I'm not going to talk about ranges, I'm not going to talk about how or you know what missiles it works best against just know that that's what its existence is about in the cockpit we're going to turn on the jammer by first giving it power and then turning it on to transmit now it needs 60 seconds to warm up before it will transmit and you'll get some messages on your mfd telling you that it's in op and then telling you that it's on now in the real world the alq 144 gets pretty hot and so we wanted to make sure that we didn't turn it on with that transmit button until we had taken off. And we wanted to turn that transmit button off prior to landing, just in case one of the crew chiefs or someone in the FARP came by and got too close to it and touched it or something like that. So that's just procedures that we do in real life. Now around 2012, some time frame in there, we started to get the common missile warning system. And I know that was around 2012 because that's when I stopped flying Kiowas and I never had this stuff on board. Now the common missile warning system or CMOS is a system that is, well, common across all the airframes. And it is essentially a detector looking for signatures of some sort of launch or detection. You can see on the aircraft, we've got these little eyeball looking things, these EOMs. These are not uncommon on other aircraft. You'll see them on the Apache as well. And it gives indications in the cockpit that the aircraft is being fired upon. Now here on the belly of the aircraft, we can see that we've got a flare dispenser located uh, firing the flares forward. I know some of you are gonna ask, why does it fire flares forward? Just understand that there's a good reason. Inside of our CMOS aircraft, things are a little bit different. Remember we had that IR jammer base. That is our circuit breaker for the CMOS. No longer do we have the jammer circuit breaker located on the overhead panel. And we do have the CMOS control head, which we just turn on. And we can change the audio and the intensity. Looking down below the collective, we've got the CMOS, which allows us to arm the flares and set it to auto or bypass, essentially bypassing the system and using your manual flare launch located on your cyclic. Again, I don't want to get into ranges or capabilities or anything that's very specific. One, because I don't remember a lot of that stuff, and two, it would be illegal for me to share it. Now for the ALQ-144 and the CMOS, both of these systems are focused on your infrared threats primarily, but we'll take a look at the APR-39, which is your radar detection set. Now in the Legacy Kiowa, you're going to see these APR-39 detectors. You've got two in the front, and then you're going to have uh, two there located on the back end, and those are your actual radar detectors. And then underneath the aircraft, you've got a blade antenna. On the newer birds, you've got those EOMs, and you can see where the APR-39 detectors have been removed. Inside the aircraft during engine start, you can turn on your radar warning and detector system here on the back panel circuit breakers. And of course, you've got your APR-39 detection kit there, and it'll give you your funny audio. So essentially, we have the early model when it was cool to fly Kiowas when Casmo was doing it, and then the later models uh, when it wasn't. The last system we have is our AVR2 laser detection kits. 
And these are located fore and aft of the aircraft. All right, so I'm on board a CMOS bird. I'm going to go ahead and crank it up and we'll talk about how to start all these systems. All right, so we've got the engine started. We've got the RPMs set to 100% throttle is full open. And at this point is when we could go ahead and turn on our APR 39 and get it started. So we're going to hit the uh, detector and warning. That's going to turn on. There it is, the APR 39 power up, that funny voice. And it's also powering up the AVR2 detectors. And as I mentioned before, we have our CMOS circuit breaker. So we'll go ahead and flip that up, bring our power system on. All right, so we got some audio things happening all at once. We've got the bit test going on for the CMOS, and we've got the APR telling us that it's operational. You see a bunch of numbers show up there. That's our software version, and in just the different images you're going to see. Now, I don't want to dive too deep into the APR uh, because I need to do some more testing, kind of remind myself how it works, but I'm kind of digging back into old Casmo's brain about the APR and what it's actually looking for. This is a very old system, okay? This is like Vietnam era type technology. It doesn't have the brains to detect various types of systems unless it's been programmed to look for them. So again, without getting too classified, uh, old uh, Attack Ops Casmo would have to program the APR 39 prior to deployment to let it know what were the systems it was looking to categorize. And then it would further categorize those as basically an SA-2, SA-6, SA-8, uh, Shilka, you'll hear it say Zeus. But that doesn't mean that's an SA-2. It just means something that's been categorized as a long range system and it will call it an SA-2. For the CMOS, we can see that it's fully operational now. We've got 30 flares on board. And as we talked about, we can set that uh, CMOS system to arm and safe auto and bypass now the avr2 is operational at this time as well it's all synced up with the apr39 so we should get a little asterisk and that uh, is a laser indication now i'm going to use the weapon select switch i'm going to select down that's going to take us to our ase setup bit page you can see that we've got avr2 power is on pulse radar warning power is on full inter so that's essentially the type of message it's going to give you full being it's going to give you the full verbiage terse means it's just going to give you a short version ir jammer we don't have one installed here's the volume for the apr 39 warnings and here's our pulse radar warning bit now as you can see this is basically what already happened during startup all those images should appear and then disappear and that lets us know that the system is good if something is still flashing it tells us that we have an error honestly we probably won't have that happen in dcs but those asterisks are our avr2s and then the triangles are indications for our apr39 uh, or in this case our eohms located uh fore and aft all right so here we are on board a alq144 bird i've got power applied once again, we can turn on our APR-39 and AVR-2 here. With that, I'm going to leave that off for now. And then we've got our IR jammer. I flipped that forward to IR jammer. That's providing power to the system. And then when we actually want to bring it online, we'll bring the switch. So this is a switch that we would uh, trigger after takeoff and then right before landing. Again, if we use our weapon select switch, select down, we're going to see IR jammer power. I'm going to go ahead and flip that on. And we can see that we've got on. Again, it takes about 60 seconds for it to warm up and be doing its job. So just something to consider. Now, you might be wondering how to make these changes between the ALQ and the CMOS version. And we do that over here on this tab at the end called Aircraft Additional Properties. Once we click on that, there's a variety of options that we can choose. The first is Remove Doors. This is the default. Uh, the only time we really flew with doors on was if it was extremely cold or if we were repositioning the aircraft for putting them on ships or boats or something like that. Install pilot display unit. We'll talk about this, I'm sure, at some point, but this is sort of a heads up display that appears here on the pilot side and gives you some data for firing weapons. We'll talk about this another time. Equip personal weapons that just removes the weapons or places them back on the dash. Remove mass mounted sight. 
I've never seen this done. I've heard of units in combat doing that for saving weight. It does save about 500 pounds. In real life, I haven't checked to see what it does in game, but that is an option. Rapid deployment gear. This was what we called squat gear. This allowed you to essentially squat the aircraft down and put it on a C-130. I'd love to see some sort of uh, options in DCS to allow us to do some things with that. Uh, but as it stands right now, it's really just purely aesthetic. And then below that, we've got the install ANALQ144. If we click that, we've got the ALQ144. As we talked about, we've got the uh, legacy style APR39 detectors. And then if we switch over, remove that, we've got the flare dispenser, and we've got the EOMs, and we've got the additional assets for the CMOS. IDM net and import editor drawings. We'll talk about these in a future video at some point. I'm still trying to wrap my head around how these work in DCS. Uh, you can import actual drawings that you create with a draw tool in the mission editor and it creates a, a variety of waypoints. You can set up targets, things like that. But that's a lot of stuff that we can just kind of fit into a separate video. The thing to remember with all this ASC equipment is it is not a magic shield. It's not a guarantee that you are not going to get hit with a missile, that you're not going to be uh, able to avoid detection. It's just something to inform you of what's going on and to give you just a little bit of an edge. You still have to maneuver tactically. You still have to make good decisions. A big thanks to Patreon and YouTube members for supporting the channel and keeping these tutorials alive. And thanks so much to you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're learning something and I hope you enjoy your time in the OH58 Delta Cobb Warrior. We'll talk to you guys later. Take it easy.